So here are the four transactions that Ron incurred uh, during the month of January. Ron sold $200 in web design services to a client on credit, net 30 days, meaning that the client owes Ron back in 30 days' time. Uh, Ron also paid $50 for his telephone bill uh, in cash, and he also purchased $200 for an ad in the local paper. Uh, but that $200 uh, ad, he has to pay at a later date. He bought it on credit. Ron also bought a new computer for the business, and he paid $1,200, and we'll assume he paid cash for that. And he paid his mother back uh, $100 for her debt, uh, which included $5 in interest as well. So let's take a look at each one of these transactions to see how we would record these transactions. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first transaction. So we're going to analyze this transaction. Uh, Ron sold $200 in web design services to a client on credit. Uh, net 30 days. So uh, basically, this just basically means that we had a sale during the month, so it affects revenue. So in terms of which accounts are impacted, well, we definitely have uh, an impact to sales. Uh, so accounts impacted are sales. And on the other side, we didn't uh, receive any cash for it. We, s we sold it on credit, so we still have an amount that's owing to us. So it's, a, it's an asset account, which is accounts receivable. Um, I just use the acronym AR for short. In terms of increasing or decreasing the account, so since we had a sale, we increased our sales by $200, uh, but we also increased our amount that's receivable to us by $200. So in both cases, it's an increase in sales. Um, and if you recall from the last uh, session, an increase in sales means we credit it. And on the other side, we're increasing the accounts receivable and to increase accounts receivable, we would debit accounts receivable. And so in terms of creating the journal entry, the journal entry would be then, and this is the, the, the normal format that we would use to record journal entries, um, whether you're using a manual system or even a, a, an accounting package, uh, you always put the debit items first usually, with a DR for short. Um, so we would debit accounts receivable, and we would debit it for $200 and we will credit sales and sales would be for $200 and it's always useful to put a description as well uh, just so that in, in future you know what this transaction was for so it's to record uh, $200 uh, sales uh, on credit so any such dis uh, description would be useful. And you'll notice that the debits and the credits all balance. They have to balance at the end. So the total debit is 200 and the total credits are 200. And that balances. And that's really important that it balances. Uh, in the next step, we'll talk about posting these into the individual buckets. Um, and we'll also introduce the concept of what we call T accounts. So instead of buckets, you can actually think of them as T accounts. Um, but I'll show you that at the next session. Let's go through the rest of these transactions. Okay, the next uh, transaction is number two. Ron paid $50 for his telephone bill in cash, and he also purchased $200 for an ad in the paper, but he bought it on credit. So this is a bit more complicated. Uh, there are a number of accounts that are impacted by it. The first one on the expense side, because he's, he's paying for a telephone expense, would be uh, the telephone expense uh, account. And also, he has, um, if we look at how he paid for that telephone expense, he paid in cash, which is an asset account. So that impacts cash. And then the second part of the, this uh, transaction, uh, which you can actually separate into two different transactions or keep them combined as one transaction. Uh, but the second part of it, he's, he paid or purchased $200 for an ad in, in the paper. Uh, so that would be advertising expense. So advertising uh, expense. And how did he pay for that? Well, he hasn't actually paid any cash yet. He bought it on credit. So he still has an amount that's payable, uh, which is a liability, which means that he owes that amount. So uh, my acronym for that is AP. So he still owes that. And now looking at in terms of what increased or decreased and how, how it increases or decreases, the telephone expense, obviously, he's increased his telephone expense by $50. 
Um, and the impact of that is on cash is that because he had to pay for it, it obviously decreased his cash. From an advertising perspective, he purchased more advertising expense, so that increased his advertising. And in terms of the liability, he now owes um, the advertising company money, so that's increased his accounts payable. Um, how that is, uh, translates into debits and credits? Well, expense, if it increases, is a debit to expense. Uh, cash would be a decrease, and a decrease in an asset is a credit. And then the other equation, if I was to split this, uh, for the advertising, he, incre he increased his advertising expense, so that would be a debit. And his accounts payable also increased. Now the accounts payable is a liability account, so increases in liability accounts are done by credit. So you can almost see that for every little debit, there is a little credit. Um, and the way we would generalize this then again is we would record all the debits first, so um, or you can keep them separate. Actually, I'll keep them separate so you can see them uh, properly. So the debit to the telephone expense uh, first, and that was for fifty dollars. And the other side to that equation is he credits cash because he paid cash for it for fifty dollars. He then debited advertising expense. So his advertising increased by $200. And finally, the way he paid for that is he credited an account payable, meaning he increased this amount owing by $200. And again, you can put a description for that as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can see that the total debits are $250 and the total credits are $250. So everything balances over here. And that's how you create the journal entries for this. Let's look at the next uh, transaction. Okay, now in this case, Ron bought a new computer for his business for $200. So we've analyzed this situation or this transaction. He's purchasing the computer which he hopes to have a future economic benefit to the company. So um, I could have either expensed the entire $1,200, but that's not really fair because um, what that means is that I'm taking the full value of the computer in this month, but it assumes then that there's no value in that computer and I won't be using the computer in future months. And we have a principle called the matching principle, which basically says that we should try and match uh, the expenses incurred during a period to the amount of revenue that's earned during that period. And to say that the full $1,200 was used during the month is not fair. So instead, what we'd like to do is take that asset, uh, which it is now, it has a future economic benefit, and we want to capitalize it. So we, we use the word capitalize to simply mean that we want to re record this as an asset as opposed to an expense. And uh, when we do the adjusting entries, I'll show you what we call depreciation, where we take a portion of that asset and move it to the expense if it depreciated during the period. So in this case, um, after analyzing this transaction, um, we know that the accounts that are impacted now are an asset account. And in this case, we'll, we'll, we'll say that it impacts the equipment, which is an asset. and we assume that he paid $1,200 in cash for this. So again, it impacts another asset account, uh, which is cash. Um, and then in terms of how it impacts, in terms of increases or decreases, obviously equipment increased. And we paid for it in cash, so our cash balance decreased. Increases in equipment are uh, in an asset account are a debit, and decreases in an asset account are credit. Again, every little debit has a little credit, and everything should balance. So the way we would actually create the journal entry then is we would debit equipment for $1,200 and we would credit cash for $1,200. Again, we'd record a, a description to, to purchase uh, the computer for the business and you, you'll see again that everything balances at the end of the day. Let's take a look at the last transaction then. Okay, in this case, uh, let's analyze this transaction. Ron paid his mother $100 back for her debt. Uh, remember, she had loaned him $500 in total. Um, and as part of the $100, he also it included $5 in interest. So in this case, what are the different accounts that are impacted? Well, we know that there's a, a liability, the debt to his mother. Uh, so that's impacted. We also know that Part of it included interest, which is actually an expense amount, uh, item. Uh, 
uh, known as interest expense. So that's another account that's impacted. And finally, the, how did he actually pay it back? Well, he paid in cash. He gave her cash back for uh, $100. What are the increases or decreases in the account? Well, he paid back his debt to his mother, so he's actually reduced the amount of debt to his mom. Um, part of it was the interest expense, so he's incurred an interest expense, so that's increased his interest expense. Um, and he paid for all of it through cash, so obviously that decreases his cash balance. Um, and then just taking a look at the debt as a liability account, and a decrease to liability account is a debit. Interest expense over here is increased, and we increase expenses by debiting an, uh, the expense. And cash is an asset account, and decreases to cash are a credit. Now, again, we've got two debits and a credit, but for every little debit, there is a credit, means that the total of these debits must balance to the total of this credit. So let's take a look at that. The way we would journalize this is we would debit the debt, which is a liability account, and we would debit it for $95. And I said $95 because we assume that part of this $100 includes the $5 interest. So $95 is what he was paying her back, plus he added another $5 in interest. We would debit interest expense for five dollars and we would credit cash for the total amount of cash that was paid which is a hundred dollars and so again you'll see that the total is balanced and again I would recommend including a description as well for this so that's how you create the various journal entries and capture those journal entries and at the end of the day you would have a whole list of journal entries in, in some sort of a register um, for each of these transactions, and I would I would each I would even mark each transaction uh, with a reference number. So you, in this case, it would be number four, just so that you can keep track of all the various journal entries during a period. In the next session, we're going to now cover how to take each one of these items and put it into and keep track of them in the various buckets, um, and we'll introduce the concept of T accounts. Thanks for watching.